Yes, you've got that right. Resin Art Coasters made easy. They look terrific, they're dazzling, and they are easy to do. Let me take you through the steps. I'll show you the tools and the products that I use, and you can start making these too. Hi everybody, welcome back to Moon Cusser Art. It's Janet, and we are going to do a set of coasters today. These molds are purchased on Amazon. Uh, there's lots of different um, stores that offer them, so I would say shop around, look for a good buy, and make sure you check your molds because there can be imperfections in them. If you have imperfections and they're not a shiny surface, send them back because you don't want that when you're working with resin. You want to make sure that your tabletop is level. That's really important. And what I'm going to do, I've got, I usually put three ounces of resin in each one of these molds to make my coasters. So here I've batched up eight ounces of resin and I'm going to split that out evenly into four cups because it's really important that you have your levels even. So let me do that. Today I'm using counterculture DIY artist resin. It withstands heat up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I've got four equal cups of resin. Each one is going to go into one of these molds. And then I pulled off a little bit. I'm going to be using Casting Craft. And this works really well for a technique to get balloons. So I'm going to add a couple of drops here. So it's four drops of Casting Craft in two tablespoons. All right. And we're going to stir that through. Okay, so it's a nice opaque white. And I'm going to be creating a center for the flower blooms. And I want to use some glitter for that. Put casting craft up here, and I have just a little bit of resin in there. And I need a stick. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit. I love this glitter. It's uh, I got it at um, Michael's, and it's just this real pretty, sparkly white. See if I can get a better shot of that for you. Not so much, but it just works really nice. It's got some silver in there and some holographic, and um, it's a good one to use, at least in, in this application. I'm, I'm going to like it. So, uh, yeah, Heidi Swap, Marquee Love, it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's start by putting in my centers. And I don't want them to be perfectly round because these are going to be flowers. Flowers are never perfectly round. I shouldn't say never. I have seen perfectly round flowers. Okay. And then we're just going to pour the resin into the molds. And I need to pop the bubbles. I'm just going to go ahead and add my flower pattern. So a lot of people 
you know, they put it into a plastic bag or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, that works. It's like uh, adding icing to a cake, but I'm just going to let mine drizzle. I like to see how my stick is kind of long in there. So that kind of slows it down. It's going to go into a thin line and I can start drawing my flower here. So I'm just letting this kind of do its own thing. You know, I'm not too concerned about the layout here because keep your eye on this one. It's going to change a lot since it's the first one I'm doing. And I use my embossing tool. It has a lower heat rating, so it works really good. You don't want to use a torch because you can ruin your molds. All right, now I've got my cup tilted. I'm loading up the stick. And see how I'm holding it actually upside down? I'm letting the resin kind of move away from the tip, and then I'm going to turn it back over. And as it slowly moves back towards the end, that's when I start moving and doing the drawing. So this is my pearl of wisdom for you guys. You don't have to use a baggie, but you do need to use your patience. And take a peek at the one that I first did it's already starting to drift. If you can notice that the uh, petals are looking a little bit different already, that's the beauty of the casting craft. It creates this drift and it shows up really nicely in clear resin. So that's why I'm doing this layer in clear so that I can really make that drift show up when I put in the next layer of colored resin. And look at that first one I did in the upper right-hand corner. See how different it looks? All right. So that's that part. And I'm going to let this sit and start to cure. Now, you might notice that there's some bubbles in there, but that's okay. I actually like seeing a little bit of bubbles in there. It gives a little bit of a sparkle and... Uh, it picks up the light, so I'm okay with that. I'm going to leave those in there, and I'm going to come back a few hours from now, and I'm going to add another layer of color on. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's the next day, and I let these cure overnight. This resin that I'm using, it cures really hard. Um, you can see in the shot here. This was the first one that I started. So, you know, you can see that I got a lot more drift in these two because these were the first two and then these two followed up. So, you know, that's what happens when you're using a really hard resin. Um, when I say a really hard resin, this resin is um, heat resistant up to 500 degrees, which is, to me, it's important to use a really strong resin when you're making coasters. Um, so, that said, this is what we've got going on. I'm really liking this one up here and this one over here. This one looks like it kind of uh, faded in a little bit more than I had wanted to, but that's okay. So, um, I am going to now put on another layer and because it's been less than 24 hours, you don't have to worry about it not sticking well. It's very open still to allow good adhesion for the next, le uh, next layer. And I'm going to be using two of the luster pigments from Resin Art. Now let me tell you a little bit about these pigments. These are from Color Art. And they are dry, but Leslie Olmsted, who is the owner of Color Art, she describes these as a moist mica pigment. And they are amazing. I tried to uh, get a good video of mixing them into the resin, and I messed up. It didn't get on camera, so I, my apologies. But let me tell you, when I say a dry pigment... You do not have to add alcohol to get it to combine in easily, and it is vibrant and just everything. Check out the description box for the video. I've got a coupon code for you. 
All right, I'm not going to draw a stick through there at all. I want them to um, just do their own thing. I'm not looking to get a pattern out of it. I don't want the colors to blend off. Um, I want them to do their own thing. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day, and I'm taking off my dust cover. And we're going to take a look and demold these. Remember, they were done with two colors from Resin Art Luster Pigments, the Belize Blues and Blue Moon. And you can see they look a lot different from when we left them yesterday. And, you know, I actually expect this. So let's demold and see what they look like. Ooh, very pretty. Whoops, sorry about the shine. Very pretty. It's almost like a snowflake kind of thing there. I like it. These blues are just fantastic. Really a nice luster. Cool. So you can see, you know, even though I poured it in a certain way, it, it moves, you know, the, the resin as it's curing and it's creating that thermal reaction. The pigments move in the resin. And even though, you know, I kind of did some patterns, they change around on you. So, there we go. Those are them. And, you know, I have... Uh, let's see if I can, yep, there it is. There's a blemish in one of my molds. So I always do a clear coat over top of my resin uh, coasters. And that way I'm sure that there's no pigments at the surface. Um, and these are uh, rock hard and they are good up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So I love that. And uh, yeah. Let's uh, sand down these little, I like to sand down the edge. Let's see if I can get that on the camera too. They're sharp. So I want to smooth that down and uh, I'll sand that, but I want to keep protect the back. I like to keep it shiny. Um, so we'll get going. All right, here we go. Right. Out in the backyard I am, I have a dust mask on, I have a towel on my lap, and my Dremel tool is inside a sock because I ruined one once before. <laughs> There's too much dust that comes off of this process. So the Dremel I'm using, I'm holding my coaster on a slight angle, and I'm putting it up against the drum of the sanding tool on the Dremel. And it just takes that lip edge right down really fast. You can also do this by using a plain sheet of sandpaper. Um, I put it down on a flat surface and then I hold the coaster on an angle and I rub that lip edge off. I'm going to drop a link in the upper right hand corner for you of a video on making a coaster where I use that technique. So check it out and hopefully it'll help you get some ideas on making some pretty resin art coasters. All right, I had the brilliant idea of using my Copic markers and creating the uh, a little bit more definition and detail for the centers. So I've got the chisel tip of my Copic marker. This one is the warm gray and I'm just laying down a dot pattern as if it's the center of a flower and by using several different colors it's going to create variations and shadings. So I just come through with that dark gray and lay down a bunch of dots and then I'll go over top of that with their ultramarine and pretty much do the same process. And these are alcohol ink markers. So they work really nicely. You can just go over 
and by dotting on top of one another, they kind of blend through each other. And then the final color that I come in, this is a light blue. And again, just adding a few of these, it helps to create some depth and definition that I felt like the centers of these coasters really needed a, a bit more of a focal. And because they're alcohol ink, the glitter actually shines back up through. So I love the look after all that. They are really just terrific, I think. And that's easy to add on. Look at that. Pretty sweet. And you can see the sparkle. Because I did the alcohol ink markers on the top, I also sealed the surface of these coasters with Kmar. Uh, it's a clear um, varnish, and that will seal down the alcohol ink marker designs that I placed there. That's really important because resin can fade the alcohol inks. So here I've got two ounces of the counterculture DIY artist resin and I'm getting that over the surfaces smoothing it with my finger and then I'm gonna pop the bubbles and cover it so that it can cure all right and there we go I let the coasters cure overnight I use these yogurt cups and the tape on the back so that I get a nice finished piece and now I'm going to work on removing the tape on the back and getting those drips off. I've got my embossing tool and I'm just warming up the tape there so that it warms up enough that I can break those drips that are on the back edge off. Sometimes it gets a little stuck and you have to tease it with a sharp tool, warm it, and it pulls right off. Now, I know some people like to use the liquid latex on the back, and it, it, it does work. However, I find, especially on a round coaster where it's really easy for me to get a nice sharp edge with the tape, that I get a cleaner break using the tape. If I use the, um, the liquid latex, I actually get a little bit of an edge still remaining and then because I'm so fussy I still come back with maybe an emery board or nail file and I get that off of there but this works really great so going around warming it up and pulling off those drips will get a really pretty bright shiny finish on the back and then once I'm all finished up I do get some um, they're called silicone cabinet bumpers and they're clear and I put those on as feet on the back to keep it lifted off of a surface. Check these out. Did they not turn out pretty? I am so so happy. I love this technique. It is easy to do. Give it a try. You have nothing to lose. And the colors from Color Art, Spectacular, Countercultures, DIY, Artist Resin, really a great performer and gives you a super look. Check out these other videos if you're interested in seeing what else I'm up to. And please don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Mooncusser Art. Bye for now and have fun arting.